Let's make your first Blender Precision model. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about showing you how far you've come in the course so far. Of course, we're at a point now that you can create your own Blender Precision models. Yes, it might be a little bit manual, but you're already at that point of being able to get things from your brain into fully functional products. So I'm gonna be showing you just a couple of extra things. This here is a USB tray that we're going to be creating that's gonna fit a USB stick perfectly after 3D printing. We're gonna cover a couple of little extra things that you should know if you're wanting to send things for 3D printing and I'm also going to show you how to make the workflow of 3D holes a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and create your first Blender precision model. And we finally reached a point to create our first precision model within Blender. Let's go ahead, let's select everything and delete it because we're going to be starting from a single vertex to create this USB tray. Now, of course, the link to the dimensional drawing of this USB tray is the first link in the description. So go ahead, download the image there, so then you can follow along. So we're going to go and be referencing from that image, and we're going to start off by creating a single vertex. So let's go here, single vertex, add. We're going to extrude this vertex on the Y by 25, and let's hit enter. Then let's go into edge selection, select this edge here, and extrude this along the X by 40. Great. All right, so now let's grab this face and extrude this up by 15. And there we have, this is basically the, the fundamental shape. And then from this point, let's go and put in the geometry of where these holes are going to be. Because of course we know how we're gonna be making holes on this. I will be showing you something a little bit different but let's go ahead, let's do that. So I'm gonna go into vertex snapping here, move the 3D cursor up to this vertex, and we're gonna create yet another single vertex. Now you might not see it because we're in face selection, so go and press one, and then we can go into our vertex selection, and you can see it's already selected. Let's extrude this out on the Y, and the hole is going to be 12 millimeters. Then we're gonna to go to Let's select this edge here, and let's extrude this out on the X by, let's see, what's it going to be? 4.5 millimeters. Great, so now we have this shape right here. Let's go into our face selection, select the face here. Let's go G, let's go Shift Z, and move it on that plane just somewhere around about there. We're gonna move it to exactly where it needs to be in a Bit. But for now, let's go Shift D, constrain it on the X and move that along. And let's do that once again, Shift D, constrain it on the X and move it along. Let's use CAD transforms now to put it in the correct place. So we have this one selected. Let's go with our Alt C, which is the shortcut that we've got set up for CAD transforms. Let's hit G to activate the movement. And we're gonna go from this point, oops, that is not correct, Jonathan. You've got to go and move this first. We've got to go G from this point to there. And then we're going to go G from here, constrain it on the X. And between each hole, it is 5.5 millimeters. Great. So let's do the same here. G, move it from here to there. G once again, constrain it on the X. Let's go 5.5 millimeters. Great. So now let's select all three of these faces and let's center this up. So we could center this up in many ways, but I'm just gonna use the simplest way, which is CAD transforms once again. So I'm gonna go with G, select this center to this center. Then I'm gonna go G yet again, grab this face center, constrain it on the Y and go to that face center there. And right here, we now have this nicely put right in the center of our model. Let's just quickly check because there is one dimensional thing right here. Let's double check that quickly. So I'm just gonna deselect everything, go G, and I'm gonna grab this point to that point. Look, it's correct, 7.75 millimeters because that's what our dimensional drawing is telling us we should get, great. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and put in these holes. Now I'm only gonna put in one 
because I want to show you another way of doing holes within Blender without using modifiers. For those of you that don't know what modifiers are, don't worry. It's just for those that have gone and explored even deeper into Blender, they probably are screaming at me, telling me, hey, why aren't you using modifiers yet? And there's a reason. We have gone and learned this, the manual method, to make sure we understand this perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead, select the face, and we know what we're doing here. We're going to go only faces, select this one, X, only faces, and now we're going to join this up. Remember, it needs to have the edges to know where this hole is. Great. Now I'm going to use circle selection, and I'm going to select up these right here. I'm going to hit F. Great. I'm now just going to go circle selection once again. Let's select all of these here. Fantastic. Then I'm going to go into edge selection and deselect these two edges right there and go F once again. And we can see we have a hole. So let's go and select these two. Hit F. Select this face that is just being created. Hit E and extruded downwards. Let's see what the dimensional drawing says. It's 10 millimeters. So let's put in 10. We're going to go minus and there we have, we have that hole in place. But doing that over and over again for all these holes is going to be a pain. So let me show you a different way. So we're going to select this. Let's select this edge loop. Let's dissolve it away because we no longer need it. And now I want you to select these two faces. Let's extrude them up by 11 millimeters because we're going to be using this as hole making geometry. So 11 millimeters up, we've just extruded from a 2D plane. So quickly check the normals. Good. All is well. So now we're going to select all of this. Let's go ahead. Let's go into our normal blender transform. So W to go up into the selection. Let's hit G, Z, go down by 10 on the minus. Great, so those are now in place. That is where we want the holes to be. So here is where, if you knew modifiers, you might say, okay, this is where we're gonna be doing a Boolean modifier. What if I told you there's such thing as a Boolean? And if you don't know what a Boolean is, don't worry, we're about to show you right now. It's right here under face. You go face and here, intersect Boolean. Boolean basically means an operation to do an intersection, cut, or union of mesh. So we're going to click this, and you can see two holes have been made. How quick was that? All right, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what could have happened instead. We could have had a union, which means that mesh is now joint to this. Or you can have an intersection where it basically takes out what is left of the cube down there. But what we're doing right this minute is different. Okay, so we're now at this point. I think this is a good point to start talking about the, these chamfers that we have on these holes. So let's go ahead. Let's select these edges right here because it seems like it's going to be something quite simple to do, right? So we're just going to select all of these here. We're going to go control B, click. Let's go to the dialog box here. And from the drawing, it says it is one millimeter and we have one segment. And let's see what happens. Oh, dear. That very much does not look like what we're wanting. Now you might be asking, okay, Jonathan, why on earth is this happening? It's to do with edges. So you can see here there's edges that goes to them and there there's, it's basically triangulating the right way, but there's no need for it to triangulate here and triangulate, I mean the back end that is doing calculations on the back end. So how do we fix this? Well, let's undo this and give it space to be able to do this operation. So let's give it an edge loop right down the middle, cancel the movement. And now we have a whole bunch of redundant edges, which are all these right here. So we're going to select all of those X dissolve edges. And now let's go and select all these edges once again. So we're selecting them all here. I'm going to go with a circle selection just because I find it a little bit quicker. So circle selecting all of these here. And now you're going to see what a difference just having this like this makes. So control B and we're going to put in one millimeter and there you have it. 
exactly what we were looking for. All right, let's go ahead and do the rest of these chamfers. So you might have seen the outer edge of this looks a little bit confusing. You might go, okay, well, this looks pretty simple. It, all it is is I have to select this, go control B and hold on that. That hasn't done the edges like I want it to do. Maybe I need to do a chamfer on that edge. Well, that's not the outcome. Well, what this is, is actually a vertex chamfer and then an edge chamfer. So let's go into vertex. Let's select our vertices right here. Now let's do our chamfer. And you will see that in the drawing, it says that it is five millimeters. Make sure that we set this to affect only vertices. We're going to put this all the way to five and we get all these triangles. Okay. Okay. We got it so far. Let's go into our edge selection, select these edges now. And now we're going to do our other chamfer. So control B, go into our chamfer. And it looks like from the drawing that this is a two millimeter chamfer. So two millimeters hit enter. There we go. That's exactly what we were looking for. Okay. So from this point, let's go and select these right here and let's go using our normal. Actually, no, let's use CAD transforms because I like CAD transforms and I'm going to hit G. I'm going to space bar to cancel all the snapping V to do vertex snapping. We're going to snap from this one down there and then let's do it once again. G from here constrained on the Z and this measurement here looks like it is 2.11 millimeters, 2.11. Great. It's a hinder. Now we're at a point that in reality, you could say this is done, but I'm going to tell you that this is not done because at the end of the day, this is not a constrained mesh. Now, Here's where we're getting into this gray area. For those of you that are aware of precision modeling within a CAD program, which have the word constrained, this basically means that every part of a face knows exactly where it should be by a number. Mesh modeling is a little bit different. And let me show you. So let's select, let's go into object mode, select our object, let's duplicate this. And let's move this out on the Y so that we have one that's going to be non-constrained. So we're going to constrain this now. So we're going to go into our edit mode. We're going to go into vertex selection. I want you to quickly just take a look at what's going on here. So down here, it's triangulating these faces, isn't it? It thinks that this is going down this way. So this goes down this direction. This one looks like it's going straight down here. Let's take a look at the other side. Oh, the other side's a little bit different in the sense of how it's being triangulated. So let's go ahead and let's tell it what, what we actually want. You can see this one, the edge is going straight down here. Let's see what's happening on this one. This one is going to the other one. So let's tell it what to do. So let's select these two vertices right here. And let's say, hey, you join. And you can see now it knows what's going on. And right here, they can see it's cutting straight across to this point here, which is actually what we're wanting, but it isn't visually showing us. So it could technically do something strange. It could go all the way to here instead. So let's select those two vertices yet again, and let's go J to join them together. So we have now defined and constrained the mesh. Now you can see here, it might not really understand what's going on. So let's define this a little deeper now. So looking at our drawing, we can see that we actually have this edge here subdivided. So let's go ahead. Let's select that right there, right click on it, hit subdivide so that it's got an extra vertex on it. Go back into vertex selection. Now we can go ahead, click these, hit join and now we're going to go from there to here join and from here to there and join great so that's a lot more defined the mesh now knows what's going on compared to this here you can see up here it thinks that it's cutting straight across there when in reality we don't want that to do that at all so 
Let's go ahead, let's define the mesh yet again. So we're going from here to this point down there, and we're going to join from here to there, join from there to here, join and from here to there, and join. We also have one more to do, which is right across here, and we're going to go join. And I would say that now we have a defined mesh. You could send this over to a 3D printer and the 3D printer will put out exactly what you're wanting. Now, speaking of 3D printers, please keep in mind for those of you that know your 3D printer prints a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, keep in mind that you might have to measure what your 3D printer offset is and make these holes just a little bit bigger. You might have to go in, go to grab all of these holes here. Like for instance, I'll do it for my 3D printer. So for my 3D printer, I need to move these by 0.2 millimeters. So I'm gonna grab all that there. I'm gonna use normal blender um, movement. So let's just make sure we have all our faces selected correctly here. Select all those. I'm gonna go G on the X. Oh, actually I want that top bevel to move with it. So make sure that I select the top bevel as well. Great, let's go G on the X. And I'm gonna go 0.2 millimeters and I'm gonna do the same to the other side. And this here will make sure that the holes as I 3D print them are the correct size to fit a USB port. So selecting that there, let's go G on the X and this is a minus movement. So let's put in minus 0.2. Great, and I've got to do the same for these walls too. So let's select those there and let's go G Y 0.2 and let's do the same over on this side, those there and G Y minus 0.2. Right, so this here is now ready for 3D printing. In fact, so I can show you exactly why we've had to define it you can see the definition, the difference between these two models. And in fact, if you want to see even clearer, we have this thing over here, drop down on our viewport shading, that's called matte cap, which just basically shows your mesh in a different light. And in fact, there's a whole bunch. If you click on this one, you can see there's loads to pick from. And you can just see how undefined this one is compared to this one that actually knows exactly where it's going compared to this one that has no idea. And in fact, let's cover one more thing, which is the 3D print tool. So I'm gonna go back to studio lighting here because I like it. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this object right here. We're gonna open our options panel and you'll see the 3D print tool. Here, we can go ahead and go check all and it can tell you, hey, look, you have some intersecting faces and some overlapping, what's going on? So let's go in here, ah, it's selected that. Let's select everything and tell it to check once again. Okay, so what on earth is going on here? Let's go to these intersecting faces. Ah, it's because these are not defined. So once we define them, we start to get a little bit more of a mesh that is like this. So let's check all, and we have no issues at all. Now these overhanging faces, it's talking about the base because it doesn't understand that there is no basically bed, print bed right here. Anyway, with that done, let's go ahead, let's select both of these. You could use the 3D print tool export right here, but for now, I'm just gonna close this. I'm gonna go file. We're gonna export this as an STL and then I'm gonna bring it into Simplify 3D. So here we are in Simplify 3D, and let's take a look at what's going on here. So taking a nice close look at our mesh. Okay, we can see very clearly, this is our undefined mesh. And you can see here, it is cutting from this top point down to there compared to what it should be, which is up here. You can see it also doesn't quite understand what's happening here. And yeah, this is just a bit of a mess. So now you can see, what the job of edges are and constraining and defining a mesh. Now lastly, let's jump quickly back into Blender 
Because you might be going, okay, but Jonathan, you've kept telling me to use our limited dissolve. Doesn't that like destroy all the definition? No, it doesn't. It destroys only the definition that is not needed. Again, I'm not telling you we need to work in quad geometry here. I'm just telling you that you have to work in defined geometry so that your mesh knows what's going to happen when it gets triangulated. Now, let me show you an example. So we have our edges here. We're going to select everything. We're going to use X and we're going to use limited dissolve. By default, it's set to 5%. Well, five degrees. Now, what does that mean? Well, right here, you can see it's removed an edge because there is less than five degrees of difference right here. These edges that are up here define the whole position, so they have to stay. However, five degrees can be quite a bit. I like to put this to just 0 0.1, and you can see that that edge now comes back. You can also see that it's removed the edge on this face because it's a flat face and there was no need for an edge there. So that there, in essence, is what Limited Dissolve is doing. It's removing any edges that don't define your mesh by 0 0.1 degrees. A huge well done for getting through this video and sticking with the course till this point. Because quite frankly, you now know all the fundamentals needed to deal with precision modeling within Blender. Of course, there is still so much left to learn. And what's great is what's left to learn is the funnest part of Blender, because it lets you incorporate organic design and precision all within one program. Stick to the end for a little something extra. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And it's the reason why I'm able to create these videos right here for you for free. And if you're enjoying the content that I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue. For the bold of you, down in the description are three more dimensional drawings for you to practice on. Not only that, there is also a solution video in case you get stuck on any one of these.